Hello, my name is Julie and I am a careers advisor for the National Career Service. Um, today, I've been asked to speak to you um, to give you a few tips for interviews. This is normally how people feel going into an interview or when they find out um, they've got an interview, get very excited and then all these feelings come in. So I'm going to try and give you um, a few tips today to try and make sure that we can just take down the anxiety or the nervousness um, just a little bit. OK, if you don't get nervous at interviews, brilliant. These techniques um, will still uh, work for you. So I'm going to start by talking about virtual interviews because obviously uh, they're used um, a lot at the moment. Um, as you would for a normal interview, make sure that you're ready to log on um, on time. You still need to dress smartly. Um, do think about as well, a few people have been caught out. Um, if they ask you to fetch something um, when you stand up, um, will you embarrass yourself? Are you only dressed smartly from the waist up? Make sure that you've got a good connection um, and also think as well, what can interviewers see? If you're giving a brilliant interview, but you've got an inappropriate poster behind you, or if your top um, makes you camouflage into your wallpaper and all you are a floating head, um, is that going to be off-putting or say something about you to interviewers? Make sure you're in a quiet environment. We don't want well-meaning um, family members popping their head around the door to check to see how you're getting on because that can be really off-putting. The best thing about virtual interviews is that you can have notes prepared. You can have a few notes in front of you. I would bullet point them um, just so that if you do, if your mind does dry up a little bit, you can look down and you've got a little prompts there to help you. They won't know. Obviously, if you lean forward and start and um, start reading in detail, they will. But obviously, if you can just flick your eyes to something and just get a little prompt, um, then it'll be really helpful for you. It'll also help you feel a little bit more confident. So confidence um, is making sure that you're prepared. The more you prepare, the more confident you're going to feel um, going into the interview. So a couple of things that you can do is make sure that you have um, prepared for questions like, um, tell me about yourself. Now, everybody sort of says, well, of course I know about me. But then when I say, well, tell me about what skills that you've got and things like that, people tend to freeze up a bit or don't know. Um, so if you look on the National Career Service uh, website, um, there's a section called um, skills tests. Go down to the personal skills and start that. And then what you need to do is you'll see how easy it is. You just click the button that's most like you and then click continue. It does take about 10 minutes, this one. So um, I have actually um, prepared um, one that you can see so that you um, get an idea of what you'll be looking at. So this is mine. Um, you'll see that it does a grid for you. At the top there, it'll be what they think your top skills are. So mine are um, communicating and working with other people, which are perfect for the job that I do. So good for me to speak about at interview. It also goes down to things that it thinks that you're not quite as good at. Um, so planning and focusing on detail. So if you were asked the dreadful question, what is your weakness? Um, I could probably say um, planning and focusing on detail. But what I do is every day I make a list of things that I want to achieve that day and I work through it. Um, that way I don't miss anything. So although you're giving them a weakness, um, you're telling them how it won't be a problem for them because, you know, it's a problem. So you do something about it. OK, the other thing that you can do as well, just to boost your knowledge about yourself, is the buzz test um, with the buzz test. Um, it's really quick and easy again. Um, so all you do is just click the sections that you think are most like you. OK, and then there's four sets of those. Normally you'd get four letters, which is your four letter personality type. Nobody ever remembers what theirs are. So what the buzz test does is matches you to animals because people tend to uh, remember what animal they were. So I come out as a clownfish. Um, clownfish are energetic and creative. They like to be busy. They look at new ways of doing things. Um, they're good problem solvers. 
So that's a really great start for me. If I was asked the question, tell me about yourself, I could talk about being a good communicator and working with other people from the um, National Career Skills Test. And also that I'm very energetic and creative and always looking at, at better ways of doing things. So that's a brilliant um, start to answering the tell me about yourself question. What you need to do as well is have a look at the company that you are applying for. Find out a little bit about them because not only are they going to ask you to tell, the, tell them about you, they're also going to want to know what you know about them and why you want to work for them. Um, earlier, I picked up a um, advert um, from um, Indeed um, and it ended up it was for pets at home. So let's use those. I'll show you the advert in a moment. So always, always go on to that company's website, find out a little bit about their products and what they do. You'll get an idea of the atmosphere of the company. But practically every company will have an about button. If you press that, you'll get more in-depth um, knowledge about the company. And um, you can also um, click in our values, um, our history, our brands, all companies will have something like that. And then you can use that to frame your answer to that question. So it could be one of your values is pet well welfare. I'm really interested in that as well, which is one of the reasons that I want to work for you. Also learn on this page that pets at home have um, a vets attached to them as well. Um, so when they ask you, why do you want to work for, for us? Uh, what do you know about pets at home? And you said, well, I can buy dog food. They're going to think, hmm. But if you can say things along the lines of, um, oh, I know that you've actually got a section um, where there's vets attached to your stores. Um, I also know that you're interested in animal welfare, which really, really interests me um, and things like that. So building up and showing that you've got a little bit of knowledge about them rather than just what you can find out or the store is going to make them feel that you're motivated and um, really interested in working for them. So this is the advert that I pulled off indeed earlier. Um, and then what I would do is keep a copy of the adverts that I apply for. And then if I'm going in for an interview, what I would do is look at the advert and just highlight what that company is particularly looking for. You can see by this one, it's mainly customer service. So I'd think about my customer service skills and experience. If I haven't got that, what transferable skills have I got that would make me good at retail? I would make sure that I've read through those and matched myself um, to the things that they're looking for. And then I can use that in the answers um, that I'm giving them. There's also different types of um, interviews. Um, I can't, haven't real, obviously got time to go through them all now. Uh, one of them is competency um, interviews, and that's where you need to use the STAR technique. You can Google the STAR technique, um, but I'll show you um, very quickly um, how, it can, how it can help. If you're like me, you talk too much, it's a really good way of framing your question um, so they get a good quick answer. If you're not very good at chatting, then it's another way of building up your answers. So it's great for everybody. You can use them for those kind of interviews, but you can use them to build up answers for any kind of interview as well. So the S stands for situation. So it's you setting the scene, saying where you were and what you were doing. The T is for tasks. So what did you need to achieve? What did you, was there anything that you needed to overcome? Um, anything stood in your way? Um, a is for action. So what did you actually do to achieve the task? Um, if you're in a team, that's great. You can mention that, but concentrate on what your actions were. R is the results. Um, so as a result of your actions, what happened? Did you achieve the task? If you didn't, what did you learn from that? What would you do next time or you wouldn't do again? So you can see it's a really good way of framing um, questions for you. You are when you're preparing questions that you're likely to be asked, um, you can see here these are the most common ones. Uh, things like where do you see yourself in five years? You don't always have to be running the company, um, but that answer should always be with that company. OK, they don't want to think that you're going to be um, off somewhere else in five years time. 
you've always need to have questions that you can ask them as well again it shows motivation it shows interest in them these are a few that you could use but you can um, come up with your own from the research that you do into their company when you're researching them as well there's not just their website there's also social media if you look on their facebook page um twitter instagram and youtube a lot of companies are using youtube a lot now as well when I've um, when I've asked my question at the end and they say that's great is there anything else I always always would say is there anything I haven't explained properly or clearly just in case and if they ask that probably gives you another chance just in case you haven't answered anything properly but it could be that you gave a good answer and they just want to get a little bit more information so always ask that question the last thing that I want to ask you to do is give yourself feedback. Go away from the interview, give yourself some time just to breathe out and relax and um, just jot down three things that didn't go very well and three things that went really well. Hopefully you won't prepare for another interview because you'll have that one. But just in case, you can then go back and look at the things that you need to improve on. And also you don't have to practice because other things went wrong. So at the beginning, we looked a bit nervous, but now we feel a bit more like a superhero, hopefully. Um, so my last words are smile. Smile makes you sound happier. It makes you feel happier. When you feel nervous, sometimes you can come over a bit um, surly. Um, so smiling just gets rid of that. OK, don't grimace at them in a Halloween way, though. Breathe. I know that sounds really, really silly, but when you're nervous, what you start to do is not not breathing properly and that's when your voice goes a little bit squeaky and um, you start to feel a little bit panicky so when they ask you a question breathe okay you don't have to answer straight away you're not against the clock okay take a breath think about what you want to say and say it you can say things like oh that's a really good question let me just think about it Use good showing off. Good showing off is saying what you're good at. So looking at your skills and things. Uh, bad showing off is saying that you're the best in the world ever and you can't back it up by any experience or proof. OK, but the biggest thing is be prepared. The more preparation that you do, um, the more um, confident you are going to feel. As I said at the beginning, if you need any extra help, please give the National Career Service a call and we'll be happy to fix you up with a careers advisor. Thank you.